So our friend Jonathan Blow is back and he's gonna blow us all away again with his hot take. Current software engineers have no deep knowledge. I think there's a pretty serious problem that started happening in programming culture. I mean, it's been, it's been in programming for as long as I've been in. And this is beyond games even, this is everywhere. Yeah. People don't have a clear picture of what knowledge is deep versus what knowledge is shallow, right? So if you, if you go to school and you're a good student and you learn the difference between n log n and n squared, right? That's deep knowledge that will apply in many cases and it's something fundamental about computers, right? Um, on the other hand, if you go on Hacker News and read an article about somebody learning a specific JavaScript API and tutorializing it, right? That's very shallow knowledge because it's just, you're, you're learning about arbitrary decisions that somebody made about how to interface with a thing that you're not even trying to understand, right? And that, but that knowledge- So I have a couple points here. One, everybody hates algorithms and data structures, but I think one thing you can't deny is that those topics are very fundamental. And that's why you see them applied in so many areas. Like sliding window is not just something used to solve leak code problems. It's used in many places, data processing, rate limiting, a lot of places. But the bigger point, what he said nowadays, I see it manifested a lot when it comes to React developers, to be honest, because the first thing somebody does when they want to learn front end development is they see React. That's the number one framework. But it's almost like they skip a step. They don't even learn JavaScript fundamentals. I don't know how you can possibly call yourself a React dev and not know anything about the virtual DOM, for example, and why it helps like improve the performance of larger front-end apps. Sometimes I feel like most people don't even know why they're using a framework anymore, especially beginners. They just do it because everyone else is doing it. If you have a really small one-page app and you need a little bit of interactivity, why don't you just write vanilla JavaScript? Oh wait, they can't, they don't know how. They've never directly manipulated the DOM before and it's kind of embarrassing. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. If you're a beginner, I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm just telling you, you should learn to walk before you can run because it's gonna catch up with you in the long run. Same thing with open source development. Before it used to be you need to do leak code to get a job. Nowadays it's you need to do open source software development to get a job. And so you'll see beginners asking, and people have asked me this question, how do I get into open source? And they barely know how to code. They haven't done personal projects. They learned one language, never learned Git. God help the projects that they end up contributing to because it's gonna be a mess. Now I do see the other side, obviously understanding the virtual DOM is not gonna necessarily allow you to actually build an application, but like high level knowledge of JSX, how React hooks work, that stuff actually will allow you to build an app. So that's like the first thing people are gonna go for, which is understandable. So even though I'm ranting, usually there is a reason for everything. Knowledge became very popular since, let's say since 2005, once, once this second boom of programming happened and everybody realized, oh, you can make a lot of money in programming or whatever, all these people showed up and they just want the job where they could do JavaScript and so they just learn the API, right? And so th there's been a deluge of shallow knowledge. I wonder if Jonathan Blow considers like front-end developers lower tier. And for the record, I don't. I did front-end development. Front-end development can go surprisingly deep, but I thought that was an interesting take. Seems like he's calling quite a few people out. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that because part of the way that you learn deep knowledge is by looking at shallow things and reading the pattern underneath. Like, if there's an API to do something, if it's a good API, then by looking at the API choices, you can understand the problem yeah. and the mechanic. Even if you can't see the code, it's better if you could see the code inside. But if you can't, you can still see some things about the mechanics. And, yeah. you know, one example of that is a graphics API. It's like, okay, they want me to, like, put the vertex data into a buffer and like lock the buffer and then not touch it. Why is that? Oh, it's going to the GPU and all this stuff, right? You can figure this out. On the other hand, if it's a bad API- I'm not familiar with like GPU processing, but there's a similar pattern when it comes to big data processing. After each step, the data itself gets locked. One of the reasons is it's happening in parallel. So I think what he says definitely applies. Patterns are so much more important than like the actual smaller details. API, which most APIs are, it'll be full of stuff that's stupid, or even cargo culting where they're copying a good API. So 
My favorite example of this was when Microsoft did Direct 2D, which was taking Direct 3D, which was successful, and then trying to add font rendering and all that to that. They made um, an ARGB color, right, so red, green, blue, and alpha, oh. a lockable resource. So to create one of these, you had to like lock it and fill the color data and unlock it. And I'm like, you have no idea what you're doing. And I actually told Microsoft this, and they didn't, they did not like my opinion on that. Um, but they were just copying, oh, Direct3D has you lock things and fill them, and so let's do that here. And it was completely absurd. So I think he's absolutely right that this kind of stuff happens at like big tech companies where you wouldn't necessarily expect it to. Bad abstractions can 100% exist, even at Google. I've talked probably enough about that. Uh, for the record, good abstractions exist as well. And that's what like most people will hear about. You don't really hear about the bad abstractions, but they're everywhere, unfortunately. So how to fix it, we... There just isn't much of an idea right now of what an actual respectable engineer is, you know? Like if you think back to like civil engineering, like people who build bridges or whatever, you think of people who are responsible and know things well and, and make sure they're right because it's important to be right. We don't really have that in software at all. It's completely dead as far as... And the funny thing is, AI is probably not going to help that because, okay, got a bunch of AI-generated code, thousands of lines. Well, it works. I'm not going to read it. If you ever need to have an actual developer go in there, I mean, unless the AI can just literally do everything, unless it's AGI, at some point you might need a developer to go in there and fix the mess that the AI made. It's going to be pretty damn hard if it's nonsensical code. As I can tell, and... Part of the reason it's dead is because nobody can tell what's right, because it's just a bunch of people arguing in a loud room, and, nah, 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 and yeah. like no real information gets through. And if anybody has an idea how to solve that, <laughs> I would love to hear that idea. I don't know. The only way that I know to solve it is to just do better in an obvious way. And, but even that maybe doesn't win, right? Because all these- Just do better. JavaScript frameworks are still popular, even though they're all, yeah, the same as each other, right? You have NPMs to just to pad things because no yeah. one wants to write code anymore. And in the same way, the market can remain irrational longer than you could remain solvent. Um, I think software industry culture could remain stupid longer than you're alive. So I guess what he's saying is be the change you want to see in the world. Just make your code a high standard and then others can kind of follow that. So just don't create garbage packages. Given that it's like a free world and anybody can become a developer. It's pretty easy. The barrier to entry is relatively low. I don't think there is a solution to what he's saying. There's probably more bad code out there than good code. And it's not easy to create good code, to be fair. Creating really, really good libraries that can be extended and used and providing good abstractions is hard. That's the problem. It's not that developers are dumb and they're just always shipping really bad code. It's hard to do what he's saying. Like, that's just possible. Um, so I'm going to do, I'm doing what I can do, but I'm very conscious that I have a limited ability to affect this giant thing. 